Hey, what's up you guys and today I have a new setup hopefully you like it but I want to talk to you guys about buying versus renting I did a video not too long ago about uh, what my thoughts were about buying a home versus renting and so today I just want to show you a little bit of the math that goes behind it and uh, I think you'd be surprised on what you will find after this video and towards the end of the video so if you're interested keep on watching so today we'll be discussing buying versus renting. So first, let's look at what the numbers show uh, regarding buying a home. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use an example. In this example, we're going to look at a current home value of $200,000. The down payment uh, slash investment for this home is going to be $40,000 or 20% down. And we're going to look at a 30-year mortgage. Um, so the 30-year mortgage is going to be 160 dollars thousand dollars because you put forty thousand dollars down on a two hundred thousand dollar home the monthly payment and this includes principal interest taxes and insurance is one thousand dollars and we're going to be comparing this to renting a uh, an apartment or a home for about the same a thousand bucks let's see what it looked like after 10 years now the home value is now two hundred ninety eight thousand dollars that's a 4% annual increase or 4% annual appreciation on the home. Now, after 10 years, the mortgage is now $125,000. And we're gonna subtract that from the home value, the new home value, which gives us an equity of $173,000. Now that looks good, so far so good. You have $173,000 worth of equity in your home right there now some other things to consider so now we're going to look at the equity we have $173,000 now we're going to look at the cost and this is the key guys this is what a lot of people don't look at when purchasing a home is the cost associated with purchasing a home now the first thing we're looking at is the mortgage payments uh that's a thousand dollars uh 120 months it's the 10 years you know 12 months in a year and 10 years 120 months you spent $120,000 and this is primarily going to be uh, interest, taxes and insurance that you don't get back. Now the maintenance costs and this is where a lot of people really don't understand or they're really not sure or have no idea uh, that it's going to cost them money to maintain a home. And you see a lot of resources out there, anywhere from 1% to 5% is going to cost you. Um, and that's uh, 1% to 5% of your home value. As it goes up, you're going to continue to uh, uh, maintain it. So I went with, with a middle ground of 2%. And that equals $40,000 that you're going to put into this home. So we're going to subtract the mortgage payments that you put into it, right? plus the maintenance costs, you're gonna subtract that, I mean, and that leaves you with the real return on investment of $13,000. That's $13,000 that you really have made because you're subtracting all your costs. Now let's look at renting now. Renting an apartment or a home. First, we're gonna look at uh, some of uh, the assumptions. So the down payment, similar to how you know down payment slash investment similar to how you put in uh forty thousand dollars into a home you've got forty thousand dollars you're going to be investing so that's the alternative right you have forty thousand dollars you didn't buy a home so you have forty thousand dollars your monthly rent payment is going to be similar uh actually exactly the same as if you were gonna uh pay a mortgage now as you can see here that's the forty thousand dollars down payment uh, that's what we're going to use to invest and here's the monthly payment on the mortgage so we're really comparing apples to apples here now 10 years later and renting now your initial investment is the forty thousand dollars right that you didn't put towards a down payment but you invested in the stock market instead now I'm gonna add another forty thousand dollars that was divided into the um, investment and that forty thousand dollars is the maintenance savings that you're not paying towards the maintenance of a home you get to keep that so instead of putting it towards maintenance of a home you're just going to invest into the stock market as well and that's what um, in the earlier slide i was talking about is that that cost that most people aren't aware of and aren't sure of 
uh, didn't or they did not know uh, goes into buying a home. So you get you get to keep that. You get to save that. And so after 10 years with a 9% return, so assuming the 9% return is in, in like a S&P 500 index fund or something like that, um, you're going to end up with $163,000 that you've saved with the $40,000 initial investment plus another $40,000 that you invested monthly um, of $333.33 gives you $163,000 at the end of the 10 years right there. Now we're going to subtract the rent payments uh, because that's an expense. Now I increased it by 3% annually, which gives you a total expense in 10 years of $139,000 because there is an appreciation that goes with renting, you know, the rent increases and 3% is just an average, it, you know, it depends on where you live. There's a lot of factors, but I went ahead and went with the 3%. Now your real return on investment is $24,000. So let's compare that to buying a home, shall we? Yes, we shall. So the results after 10 years, we'll look at renting first is $24,000 that your real rate of return came out to be being. Buying is only $13,000, you know, after all the costs associated with it. So renting gives you $11,000 more. I'm sure a lot of you didn't see that coming. Yes, buying is more expensive than renting if you're investing the difference. Now, I did another calculation on results after 30 years. And this is really if you're holding on to the mortgage for the entire 30 years. So if you're holding on to a mortgage for 30 years, these are the results if you're comparing renting for 30 years versus owning a home after 30 years. And if you're buying at the end of the 30 years, minus all your cost, you're looking at $280,000 rate of return. Versus renting, you end up with $463,000. And that's using the same math that I did with the 10 years. I just increased it into the 30 years. So that's a difference of $183,000 that you're gaining by renting versus buying. Now here's some thoughts. Here's some takeaways out of these quick calculations that I, that I did. I do recommend still buying a home if you're not familiar with the stock market. Because the only way this would make sense is if you, you intentionally invested the difference like you you invested the forty thousand dollars in good either mutual funds or s&p 500 index fund or, or, or a collection of really good sound companies for 30 years so if you're not familiar with the stock market you're not comfortable with the stock market you don't know much about the stock market and you're not going to be intentional with the savings the money that you're not putting into the expenses of a home then buy a home and do not rent you're not a natural saver. You're not gonna save the difference. It goes back to not familiar with the stock market. If you're not a natural saver. You're not gonna invest the difference, the $333 that you're saving by not purchasing a home, then you should buy a home and you should not rent. Now, the other thing is paying off the mortgage in 10 to 15 years. This is absolute must. Uh, if you're gonna buy a home, you need to pay it off sooner than later because you're gonna be spending a lot of money not only interest, taxes, and insurance, but also on all the expenses that come with maintaining a home for 30 years. And of course, the older the home gets, the more expensive it becomes. Renting is much more expensive. In your area, if renting is a lot more than purchasing a decent home uh, or a home that is uh, below your cost, like for example, if you're you know, rent, the average rent of uh, the same type of home is $1,500, but you can buy a home and your mortgage is $1,000, definitely buy a home. You need more space or less restrictions. You know, you have pets or et cetera, and it's hard for you to find a place where it allow you, allows you to have your pets, uh, or you just need more space in apartment complexes or the homes that you've looked at to rent just doesn't meet that. And you're willing to, to pay the extra on maintenance and all that to, to, to buy a home, then buy a home. 
And lastly, it makes you feel better about yourself. You know, home ownership is, is, is a sense of pride, is a sense of accomplishment. It gives you a lot of uh, motivation to continue to do other types of investing, then definitely buy a home. But that's it, guys. I just want to go a deeper dive into, you know, the difference between renting and buying a home. And mind you, this is if you've kept the mortgage for 30 years in this scenario, or at least 10 years versus renting. So I thought it was interesting because I know renting always is given a bad rap, but if you're intentional, if you're investing the difference, and if you're uh, uh, motivated uh, into building wealth and you know what you're doing, you're looking at your numbers, then renting is not a bad deal. But like I said before, uh, buy a home if, in my opinion, if uh, any of these other um, things that I covered uh, apply to you. Uh, buying a home is still a good investment, I believe, in the long run, and especially if you pay it off in, the, in five or 10 years. I'll probably do another video on the, the benefits of buying a home versus renting if you pay it off sooner, and especially, maybe there'll be a third video, if you rent that home at some point. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Your support would be greatly appreciated. That's it for today, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.